little meeting started. I'm going to get this meeting started here. Thanks for everybody uh, joining and uh, welcome to this glorious, uh, glorious morning. Uh, thank you, Jason, for joining us as well. How's everything going today, Mike? Yeah, it's going good. It's going good. Yeah. Bright and early. Got you bright and early. <laughs> so uh, just a little introduction uh, to Michael. Um, obviously, a uh, legendary uh, New York Giants NFL running back, uh, played at uh, Michigan State, played at uh, UMass, played at Avon Old Farms. Um, going to be going through a couple of questions today about just your story, talking about the transition from high school to college, from college to the NFL. Going to go talk about a bunch of the challenges that you might have been facing throughout those transitions. So let's start with high school. So what was it like playing at the high school level at Avon Old Farms? Uh, and what was it like to transition from Avon Old Farms to a school like Michigan? I'd say really it was, for me, my first time playing football really was in high school, you know, going to Avon, I was my first time really getting a chance to play. So that transition for me was, um, it was just going from literally learning the sport to really kind of defining my skills and getting to really play out what those skills were. Cause in high school, I was just learning, you know, what I could do in the game as far as just really getting out on the field and playing it. And then in college, it was actually, okay, now learning really the schemes and the more details behind the game. Um, and I've always been kind of physically more developed. So that transition physical wise wasn't that hard for me. Um, but mentally I had to learn a lot more in college than in high school. So you ended up obviously at Michigan transitioning from high school, you ended up at Michigan. Talk us through what the recruitment process was like. Obviously you were looking at a bunch of, bunch of different schools recruiting you. What was that whole process like? Really, it was, it definitely was a lot because obviously it's one of the biggest decisions of your life, um, deciding what college you're gonna go to. And uh, I really just, I did it with my family and deciding, you know, what were the negatives and positives of each school, really making a list and deciding what would be the best option for me to do. Um, so yeah, I was really visiting the schools, determining what I really wanted to do in college and what, you know, my goals were and just what was the best overall fit for me. Right, right. So talk us, talk us through, you know, what was going through your mind when you made that final decision, um, obviously, you know, considering Michigan as one of the biggest schools, uh, college football wise, uh, you're probably at the time getting recru uh, recruited by Coach Lloyd, but then when you get there, you had to transition from Coach Lloyd to Coach Richrod. Was that, was that something that threw you off a little bit? Was there, was there a challenge with respect to, you know, understanding the differences between the two coaches or did that was that something that you know kind of come come naturally to you uh, for me I felt like I was the type of player I could really play under any kind of scheme that was you know available but I would have preferred to play in the pro set so that definitely was kind of a big deal when the coaching change happened I, I really almost didn't even go to Michigan when that happened but I was just thinking about it and I liked everything else from the school standpoint, um, great traditional football program. Uh, so really, I liked everything about it. And then just with the coaching change, I wasn't necessarily sure. But then he came out, visited me and, you know, really convinced me that I should still go there. And I knew as far as like my skill set went that I was, you know, good enough or, you know, had the skill set to play in a spread as well mm -hmm. as a pro set offense. So, so walk us through for, for those of uh, for those of us in the crowd here that are not uh, so familiar with the difference between the pro set offense and the spread offense. What kind of um, what kind of adversity as a running back do you have to adapt to when going from a pro set offense 
to a spread style offense. With the pro set, it really is just kind of, you, you know, you're going straight downhill and, you know, what what you really see, you know, in the professional game, uh, usually a, a little bit more intricate as far as like play wise, play calls and everything. Um, with the spread is more, a lot more lateral movement, you know, um, a lot of uh, just, you know, side to side action, at, you know, kind of trying to play off where the defense is setting up and then, you know, either going around them or having to cut it up as opposed to, you know, the pro set is really just you're right downhill from the start and trying to, you know, get what you can. And the spread is more so, I say like more like kind of trickeration, kind of try to get around or make plays happen. Was there something that didn't work or was there something when you were going through that transition from pro set to spread uh, especially at Michigan, was there something that um, stood out to you in your mind uh, that didn't work well for the team that you were with at the time? Because I know that the performance overall under Coach uh, Rich Rod, like, you know, not to take anything away from him, I know that, you know, he's a legendary coach. Was there something that, you know, maybe, you know, held you guys back overall as a team or... Oh, sorry, say it again. What was there anything you know with respect to um, the mindset or with respect to the spread style offense that held uh, held you guys back as a team, as as Michigan as a team? Um, I really say a lot of the guys because everyone obviously came to Lloyd before or was playing under him, and then mm -hmm. the new guys that were in my class. Most of the guys really had committed to Carr as well. And then, you know, we're switching over to the spread. And so I felt like a lot of the guys' skill set were meant for a pro offense. Um, not that they couldn't play in a spread. Um, I felt like we had a lot of very, very skilled players that could do both. But definitely going from, you know, one style of play to a completely different style of play was a difficult adjustment. And um, I think it was really just making that adjustment, especially uh, on the defensive side of the ball like that's really where that was kind of like the biggest biggest change that was difficult for us because on the offensive side of the ball we actually did put them you know decent numbers um mm -hmm. but i just felt like on the defensive side it definitely was that change was a lot more difficult was there anything in terms of obviously you have the mental challenge changing your mindset changing your strategy on the field was there anything physical physically different in terms of your training your preparation for the game uh that changed between the two styles uh yeah really everything changed the you know this style that we were running before really was you know just like a pro set game where you know you do your play and then you're taking most of that time off the clock before the next play as opposed to the spread is literally you know just as fast as you can go so the condition it was completely different it was one from you know more just power and you know being bigger type of guy as opposed to the spread where it's just you know how fast are you how good a condition are you and so it was as far as training wise it was you know maybe doing a workout that was I don't know maybe 45 minutes long as opposed to doing like a, another workout where your warm-up's 45 minutes long and wow. you're literally sprinting miles you know every day as opposed to wow. maybe with the other set like okay maybe you end up doing, you know, a mile or two for the whole week. So it so, was yeah. really different. Yeah. And I think that, I think that, you know, when you hear the difference between the two, people don't, people don't fully understand that. It's not just what you're doing on the field that matters. It's every, every minute you're on the field, you're spending another 10 minutes off the field, practicing, mm -hmm. running through those strategies physically so that your body can handle what you're doing on the field. Um, now, you're at Michigan, you're going through, you know, your freshman year, red shirt, what in your mind, you know, are you thinking is going to help you get to that next level stats wise, like some of the, um, some of the thoughts that I have for somebody who, you know, wants to make it to the NFL. Obviously, you want to have the numbers. You do really well at Michigan, but you really want to shine. 
was there something in your mind uh, that, you know, maybe a light bulb went off, like, oh, I need to go showcase myself at a, another school, perhaps UMass? Like, was there something, a moment in time where you were like, this is what I need to do? Yeah, I feel like really I kind of know, I known from just seeing so many people, especially, you know, going to Michigan and seeing all these guys going from there to going pro, I kind of knew, you know, what needed to be done to get to that next level and what guys had done before me. And really for me personally, I felt like just getting that time, you know, out there for the scouts to see what I could do was really the biggest thing. Um, so I think it was probably, yeah, it was like probably my sophomore year. No, no, it was my, yeah, it was my uh, junior year. That's when I had decided, you know, I was going to transfer. Um, and then I had saw what Russell Wilson did. He was really kind of like the first guy to graduate early and, you know, switch schools and then not have to sit out at all. Um, and so I saw what he did, obviously, you know, great player. And I was like, you know, this could be a really good option for me just because it wasn't guaranteed if I was going to play that much coming back to Michigan that next year. And then um, I was, you know, kind of looking around and then I know UMass specifically, you know, that was back home and I talked to the coaches and pretty much it was like, you know, you're going to come here and you'll definitely get to play a lot. And that was the biggest thing for me. And then it was cool that we actually got to play Michigan that year as well. So that's why I ended up going with them so I can get that tape to help me go to the next level. What was it like going from a D1 single A school to a D1 double A school and then coming back to play that old team that you obviously were obviously were on? What was it like being on the field against being against your uh, your former teammates? Yeah, no, it was it was pretty cool. I mean, obviously I I literally was with these people, you know, day in and day out, practicing, playing games, you know, most of my college career and then going to UMass and going back and playing them. So it was like, I really, I knew everybody, you know, I knew the system, I knew kind of everything that was going on, but just a different team. Um, but I, it was, it was really fun though, really get, getting just to go back and play against my old friends and everything. Uh, definitely different, you know, go, going, you know, going from Michigan to playing at a school that was just a double A school and just turned division one A. Um, so there was definitely a big gap really between everything from how much, you know, equipment and stuff, you know, we're getting and, you know, our locker rooms and everything, cause they were still in that transition stage. Um, but it, overall, like I, I had a like great experience doing that. So it was pretty cool just getting back and be able to play against all my old friends. So you're at you're at UMass now. You put up some pretty impressive numbers with respect to leading basically the offense uh, in yardage. Um, is this where you are starting to think in your mind, okay, I'm gonna be drafted? Like this is this is it? I'm good to go? Or or is that something that wasn't on your mind? Was it? You know, maybe something on a back burner or, you know, subconsciously that was there. I mean, I always wanted to get drafted and that was been the goal since I went to college, really. But as far as at the end of, you know, the season at UMass that I had, I, I really didn't know if I was going to get drafted or not. So that wasn't, you know, I wasn't going into a thing like, oh, you know, I'm definitely going to get drafted or I'm definitely not or something like that. It was just kind of, I just hope you know, I'm in the best situation that I could possibly be in. But I didn't really have an idea until I knew I was on, you know, the map. People knew who I was like a little bit, especially just coming from Michigan. And then after the combine, I put up some really good numbers. And then I had a ton, a ton of scouts call me after that. And they gave me reports and pretty much, you know, all of them were telling me like, you're pretty much going to get drafted for sure. So I had an idea. I still didn't I wasn't going into it like, oh, I'm definitely going to get drafted, but I had an idea just from what all the scouts were telling me that I was, you know, projected to get drafted. So, you know, I was definitely hopeful, but at the same time, if I didn't get drafted, I wasn't, it wasn't going to be like the end of the world for me. I knew I was going to be, get my opportunity with some team regardless. So that's really how I felt about it. Tell us how you prepared for the combine. Was that something that, you know, 
took your time away from your focus on the field or was that something that, you know, you, you were able to just kind of go to and crush it at? Was there, was there like a certain uh, style of training? Was there a certain uh, program that you jumped on or, or did you just kind of show up, knew you had the talent and, and go for it? With the training, it really, it, it was some of the toughest training of my, of my life. Um, well, I, I want to say it's the toughest, but it's like you had to put in a lot of a lot of work for it, or at least I did. I actually had the same trainer from college that was doing my combine training for the NFL because uh, he ended up just opening up his own gym, doing his own thing in Michigan as well. And so I ended up going back over there, literally living at the gym. I was living in the back of the gym in this trailer for maybe like four months or so. And really just every day I was, you know, we get up, have like our training from 8 a.m. maybe till, you know, 1 p.m. or so, 1, 2 p.m. And that was really it. So it was probably about like six, seven hours of training we would have every day. Um, just going over technique, you know, lifting weights, uh, you know, just being in just great shape overall. So um. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of work. I mean, yeah, I'd say, yeah, like really six, seven hours or so of working out every single day for like four months straight and not really yeah. doing anything else. So d definitely um, I trained really hard for that. And I know a lot of guys do with the combine stuff. Um, So that's that's pretty normal. But um, yeah, because I mean, you're really going against the best athletes in the world and everybody wants to show their best talent. So I think for the most part, like most people train a lot for it. Yeah. So, so you, so you get through the combine, you get drafted, you get drafted by the New York giants. Mm -hmm. um, tell us, tell us about what it was like, uh, you know, who, you know, you're walking onto a team who just won the Super Bowl 2012. Tell us about um, what that rookie mini camp was like when you first get, you know, over the fact that you just got drafted, excitement kind of calms down. Now it's, you got to put on your business suit, show up and it's, it's game time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, it was pretty cool. Just um, really just getting to be there and, you know, seeing that I could really like play with all the guys and, for me, like personally, like athletic wise, it was like, okay, wow, like, you know, I came here and I'm still, you know, a lot better, like athlete than a lot of these people out here. And really the hardest part of the game was just learning the new playbooks and everything, but mm. having played under so many different schemes in college and everything just through the years, it was actually a lot easier for me to learn, you know, the, all these new things that were going on. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was it was pretty cool. Um, just getting to be there and to play and see that I could play with these guys. And although it was a lot harder skill wise, you know, college athlete to professional athlete, you're also playing with the best players, you know, in the world. So it it kind of like complements each other. So it's okay, you're playing against a lot bigger, faster, better people, but you're playing with the same thing. So that really that really helps out. So you're on the field with guys like Eli Manning, your coach is Tom Coughlin. What can you tell us about in terms of like the transition from the difference between the transition from high school to college versus college to the pros? Mm -hmm. Can you give us a little contrast on what it was like, just the difference? Yeah, I mean, they're all really big jumps because, you know, in high school, really, it's you could just be a good athlete and kind of do anything that you want and get away with it and do very well. And then you go to college where you actually, you know, have to at least follow the playbook and stuff somewhat, you know, in order to be successful. And the players are a lot better than high school. Um, but still, you know, you compare like college to the NFL where you can take, you know, the best guy on your college team. And then that might be, you know, one of the worst players or like, you know, maybe like an average player on your team in the NFL. So it's really, you know, you take like the the best guy on your team and then every NFL team is 
every single player is that player or better, you know? And so Mm -hmm. it's in the NFL, it's who makes the least mistakes really. It's, it's a lot more of a mental game as opposed to, you know, college where obviously everybody's a lot better athlete than high school, but still, you know, you could get away with a lot more as opposed to the NFL where you really, you have to follow the schemes and do these certain fundamental things or else you're just not, it's not going to work just because everybody is such a high level. It's really, you know, the difference is, you know, who is, who knows the game mentally better and, you know, who's making the least mistakes as opposed to, you know, who's just doing the best, making the both split, the, the best plays or whatever. Right. So you're, you're obviously amongst many talented players when you're on the field. Are you looking to gain um, are you looking to gain a little bit of that uh, knowledge and skill from your peers or is it more you're in your own mind, you're in your own bubble of training where you're developing your own skills, developing your own talents? Um, what is it like kind of being around, you know, stars like Brandon Jacobs, uh, you know, all these big athletes that, you know, are obviously incredibly talented. Do you ever find your, did you ever find yourself, you know, like looking over your shoulder, trying to pick up a little bit of, um, you know, pro tips, so to speak, when you're first transitioning into that, that new setting, that new role? Yeah, definitely. Really, it was a lot more, I would say like mental than physical, because physical, you already have the skill sets and, you know, did what you need to do to get to the NFL. And it's more about really maintaining at that point, as opposed to really physically getting better you know like I know I did always try to get physically better but they really they would they look at you more as you know hey you're already good enough physically to be here let's not overdo it let's just keep Mm -hmm. you at this level and you know just keep on performing well um so really learning from the older guys wasn't necessarily you know what are we physically going to do out there but it's you know what how how do you look at this defense you know what's maybe like a little bit better technique on, you know, this blocking assignment or, you know, just kind of like little things like this. So definitely talking to people that have been there and done it, they really can help you out with a lot of these things. And I know for the most part, like a lot of the older guys are helpful. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe like some more than others, but uh, definitely I know I at least took advantage of talking to people that have been there before me and really getting, you know, some good tips to to help me perform who would you say out of all the members of uh the team at the time who would you say kind of really took that leadership role as kind of like a mentor to you uh Mm -hmm. was there one individual in particular that really kind of took you under their wing Mm -hmm. uh i had a couple guys that really you know helped me i don't know like brandon jacobs i was playing with him he de- we definitely, you know, talked all the time about just different things and, you know, just like life, whether it was like, you know, in football or outside of football, you know, on and off the field. Um, Rashad Jennings, like a good friend of mine. I mean, really, really all the older guys, mm. especially, you know, in the running back room, like we're all really close. And so, yeah, we always all talked and kind of, you know, just went over things and try to figure out, you know, like what's what's the best and all around so gotcha so obviously um you know you have your ups and downs through the transitions from different styles of play from the pro set to the spread from high school to college from michigan to umass from umass to the nfl you're in the nfl now and Unfortunately, you have a major injury. Can you tell us about what was going through your mind at the time when you had this major injury, um, just mentally, physically? Where was your mind at? When, when it first happened, I really wasn't sure, you know, what had happened with, like, my leg and ankle and everything. I knew it was bad because just, you know, the whole situation, how like just like it felt and, you know, like what I heard and everything. Um, but after seeing the doctors getting my surgery and everything and 
them saying that, you know, I would be able to fully or should be able to fully recover from it. You know, from that point on, it was, you know, I was definitely like very like optimistic and positive about it. And really like my only focus was just getting back to playing. And so it was just focusing on the rehab and just getting myself back to playing. So that's really all that I thought about during the, during the process. So you kind of go back to that mindset of when you were in the, uh, in the, in the combine, you know, those four hours, six hours a day, even though it's not Mm -hmm. four hours, six hours a day uh, in the, uh, in the gym, it's four hours, six hours a day doing your rehab. Um, You know, so to speak, probably not four hours or six hours of rehab, but you understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Um, Give us a little bit of uh give us a little bit of an idea of what was your mind telling you, you know, at that time, were you thinking, okay, maybe I do need to have something not as a backup plan, but like another passion in life where you need to kind of grow uh, and start to kind of develop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Cause like you said, you know, you can't do rehab all day. Although I did try to do a lot, you know, um so I would maybe do you know three or four hours a day of rehab you know every single day um so I try to get in as much work as possible but at the end of the day that's still only even if you're working out or doing whatever your rehab is for four hours you still have the whole rest of the day to do other things and so I had a lot more free time than I normally would have and really with that free time I just you know got to think you know what if you know I don't go back to football or I mean, that was really never the mindset I had, but it was, you know, football has to end at some point, you know, and when it does, what, what do I want to do or what am I going to do after it? And so as I, like, since I had so much free time, I was like, okay, now, you know, what am I going to do with this time? And that's when I really started to think about, you know, what else I want to do because my whole life, I really, I knew I was going to be a pro athlete. And so that was my, really my only focus. Um, I knew I wanted to do something in business as well, but like really my main focus was just sports. That's all that I thought about, all that I really cared and put effort towards. And then, um, you know, getting injured, it was like, wow, like, okay, you know, you can get injured anytime. You don't know when you're going to stop playing. Um, like what else do I want to do? And so I really used the extra time I had to kind of get other skills and just learn about other things that I might want to do. Right. Right. So Tell us about like, you know, the difference between where you are now health wise, where you are now uh, in terms of mindset, taking care of your body, fitness, um, you know, what are you doing these days to kind of maintain your body, maintain your health? Mm. Um, well, I still I actually have another surgery coming up, so I'm not back to, you know, 100 percent. yet. hopefully after this next surgery, I, I, I get better. Um so it's still, it's still been a process, you know, four surgeries, uh, my leg and ankle. So it's been, it's been a lot, but, um, you know, I'm still, I'm still getting in shape, you know, where I can, obviously I can't, you know, run or anything at the moment, but, um, I still, you know, try to stay in shape with, you know, what I'm physically able to do. Right. Mm-hmm. So what we, uh, have planned today is, um, just like a little bit of a body weight workout, kind of get everybody here involved, kind of end on a nice uh, note with respect to taking care of our bodies. Um, if it's cool with you guys, I'd like to have uh, Jason, our uh, our head trainer here at uh, You Fix the Twist, kind of take the lead on that. And Michael, if you'd like to join us for a little workout, uh, don't overdo it. Obviously, we want to keep you healthy. Um, but, uh, we'll do a little body weight workout if anybody here wants to join us. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to introduce our, uh, our friend, uh, Jason Torrey here, uh, with the, uh, with our little workout. All right, guys. What's going on guys. Uh, Jason Torrey here. Uh, James and I have been working well together for over a year now, helping with the classes with Nardell. Um, and then Mike, I just want to, uh, get some motivation, get some energy going here, ask you a few more questions, very simply, and then, yeah, we'll get into a workout. So Mike, one question James didn't bring up, and I've always thought about this, never being a little bit of a college athlete, but not at your level is what was the mindset going through your head with your energy, 
uh, with 50,000 fans screaming and then screaming in the stadium. And what are you thinking when you know you're going to get the ball that, that day and time? Really, you know, it's obviously you have practice where you've been, you know, doing a lot of this stuff, you know, every single day. So it was really, it was kind of just natural, you know, getting the ball and knowing exactly what to do with it. And, and at that point, it's really kind of instinct because you already are a program, you know, what you're supposed to do on certain plays and then really just having the vision and seeing what you're supposed to do. And, you know, obviously you do, you do hear the crowds during the big moments, but you really don't notice it until, you know, those really big moments where maybe, you know, hopefully it's a good play, but, you know, bad plays, you notice it too. But when the crowd really makes a lot of noise, you know, like if you score a touchdown or, you know, you juke somebody out or something like that. And so really it's, for me, it was just, you know, having that instinct and really just doing what I've been doing in practice and just going through with it. So transition to that, what was the excitement through your head when, you know, the crowd went wild because you did something, putting the ball in the end zone, the motivation through your head, the energy level through your body, or you just juke someone out making them look silly? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you definitely get, you know, really excited and, you know, just pumped up that because, you know, you know that you're you're doing good and you want to continue that. And so, yeah, it's really just having that extra motivation, you know, just knowing that everyone's watching you and, you know, you want to do good and you want the people to be happy and, and your teammates. Yeah. So. Speaking of that, we were teammates in high school. I mean, it was an amazing bond and creating a friendship we had on and off the field. But specifically the first game we played, I think it was Taft. It was, uh, we were doing really well. I remember coach called, Coach Driscoll called it a toss sweep and it was over from then. That was our first bonding connection. I remember pulling out knocking someone over as a center and just taking off down the field with you. And I just remember looking in your eyes and you said, let's do this basically. <laughs> and so the smile, smile you always have and, and just saying, let's, let's go. And I, you followed me just, just not, I, I think I knocked a couple of guys over and we 70 yards later, we were cheering in the end zone and it was an amazing feeling to have that bond and the connection we had. Um, based on that little uh, comment, what was your feeling with our connection, you know, helping you get the holes you needed, the lineman, uh, lineman, me personally, and obviously lineman you always worked with, that connection you had, um, and just the bond of create, creating a, a great motivation and, and healthy relationship with your teammates, uh, lineman, and, and as it progressed as a big career. Yeah, yeah I mean, we definitely had a, a great bond and really having that bond on the field and off the field, you know, that's even better because uh, you're just, you know, that much closer and you really can build that trust, you know, from practice, seeing, you know, what, you know, you and the rest of the linemen could do and, you know, doing it and trusting in the game that you could do it as well. And so, you know, you see a hole where it might not be there initially, but then it's like, okay, I know they're going to get the job done. So, you know, you believe in it and then it opens up, you know, and you can really hit it as opposed to you don't trust it. And then it's like, oh man, now, you know, you have a decision to make, like, do I go and hope this kind of opens up for me or do, you know, I kind of do my own thing. And so that's really where the trust factor comes in. And when you really have that closer bond and then that definitely can help, you know, so you're not as hesitant or, you know, kind of do your own thing. Um, so I was definitely really, really helpful, you know, whether it's, you know, our connection from high school to all the way to the pros where, if you know that the guys in front of you, you know, you're close with and you know that they can get the job done and then it's going to make you, you know, follow the scheme better and usually lead to better results. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, guys, I want to do a little motivation. It's Saturday morning. I love uh, motivating people, help people get healthier. So, Cox, why don't we do some push-ups? We do mm -hmm. five push-ups, five sit-ups, five push-ups and five sit-ups to uh, end this thing. Ready? Mm. Yeah, I got it. I got to get a <laughs> down here or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just get set up. Yeah. Push up to Mike Cox, Jason Tory, finish this amazing interview and set off some Saturday motivation. Have a great uh, weekend and the week ahead. Let's get it after. Yeah, you, you see me from here? Yeah. <laughs>
right, let's do this. Some connection right here. Ready? Five right, push ups. One, two, three, four, five. And let's do some sit ups. One, two, Start over. One, two, three, four, five. I like to switch up the circuits, go right back to the push ups, keep the heart rate up. Let's get some reps it out, put some reps. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five. And let's finish this thing off right. Five push ups. Or five sit ups, sorry. Ready? One, two, Three, four, five. Guys, I'd like to thank you for taking the time on a Saturday morning to listen to Mike Cox and his story. Um, I'd love to train all y'all. We'll send you guys a great email to recap this. And um, James, why don't you finish it off with some closing words? Wow, awesome workout, Jason. Got my blood flowing. Thanks for uh, joining us, Michael. I really appreciate your time and insight. I think the uh, knowledge that you shared with us today definitely gives us a little bit of an idea of what it has, what has to go through your body, what has to go through your mind with respect to all the challenges that a professional athlete faces, you know, going from transition to transition. It's really uh, inspiring. And I think uh, that's something that brings valuable value, value to our community, value to the public, um, and I'm happy to share your story. I appreciate your time. Thanks. Appreciate you, Travis. Mike, any closing words? Um, yeah, I don't know. Just, uh, you know, stay focused. Um, you know, treat your body well. And, yeah, you know, build, build those bonds with your teammates. And hopefully things, you know, go the right way for you. Or, um, well... We'll always have a bond, anything you need, reach out. Mm -hmm. and uh, I'll see you guys just stay healthy and happy to help out anytime. Anywhere. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Uh, have a great weekend and enjoy yourself. We'll talk soon. Thanks. You too. All righty.